Okay. Once you have a azo compound like this. Uh, if you have a group, any group here, or you may not have a group, let's take uh, a simple uh, azo compound. Then if we reduce this, suppose if we carry out the re reduction using SNCl2 and HCl, then there's a, the spy bond is going to be reduced. And SNCl2, HCl is going to carry out the, the reduction to the second sigma bond as well. So, we will end up with two aniline basically. But if we have a mild reducing agent, then with a mild reducing agent, there will be partial reduction. This AR is for aromatic ring. There will be a partial reduction and this is called Hydrozo compound. So from uh, uh, azo compound, a hy hydrogen will be added and that will become hydrozo compound. Now, when we have a hydrozo compound, one last thing we have to talk about in this azo coupling is this hydrozo compound can have rearrangement because as we have talked, when we talked about addition of hydrazine, perhaps in Wolf Kishner reduction or before that, I told you when, when when we have two atoms adjacent to each other and they have lone pairs, then there is inter-electronic repulsion between those two atoms. And those two atoms generally try to make a bond. Now this nitrogen will try and make a bond. When it makes a bond, the lone pair goes into a bond pair. So this bond pair and lone pair will have a less extent of repulsion than previously lone pair and lone pair was having. So if both goes into to form a bond, suppose this also goes to form a bond, then the repulsion in bond pair and bond pair is considerably less than lone pair and lone pair. So this is called alpha effect. That means if you have a lone pair and at alpha position also you have a lone pair. Then there's an inter-electronic repulsion and there's a tendency to form a bond. Keeping this in mind, if we have a hydrozo compound like this, Let me draw it horizontally. If we have a hydrozo compound like this, and we have added H plus H2O into the system, then there's a rearrangement of this hydrozo compound. And uh, after rearrangement, This is what we get. Now this is called benzidine. Now you get benzidine as the final product and that completes the topic of diazo coupling except for of course the mechanism through which it's happening. If you can figure out the mechanism, you got this topic under your armpit. If you could not figure out the mechanism, you should strive until you figure out this mechanism and then you'll get this topic under your armpit. So anyways, you're again going to get this topic under your armpit. So your time starts now. Figure out the mechanism through which it must be happening. It will be a good exercise of organic chemistry of the mechanism that we have been practicing up till now. And you'll feel good that you have achieved something in life. You can work out the mechanism of a given conversion and uh, that will give you a sense that you have earned something out of this organic chemistry course. Anyways, I'm going to do it for you, but you should do it on your own. At least try doing it on your own. You have added H plus, H plus is going to come here like this. Fine. Now, what will happen is 
you have to stabilize this H plus and uh, the only way to stabilize this H plus is uh, to, 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 to bring a negative charge adjacent to the, this plus charge and try to form a bond between nitrogen and between carbon. That is what you should try and do. So let's try and do the very same. Now I'm trying to bring negative charge on this carbon. So I'm, I'll have to shift my pi bond into this carbon like this. Like this. Now there's going to be a plus charge appearing on this carbon then. And that plus charge is going to appear here. Fine. That plus charge, this plus charge, as you can see, there's a bonding between this carbon and this carbon. So if there's a plus charge appearing here, bring a negative charge on this carbon. This C minus and this C plus will form a bond among each other. Fine. And there will be a double bond formation between this nitrogen and this carbon, this nitrogen and this carbon. So try, try, try doing it on your own. Shift the by bonds accordingly and get a bond between this carbon and this carbon. When you succeed to do that, This is what you are going to have. Now, the basic rule is if aromaticity was there in the reactant, aromaticity has to be there in the product. And aromaticity, in order to generate, you have to, if this is, this, this nitrogen, this nitrogen is making a double bond. If you have to generate aromaticity on, uh, there will be two hydrogens, I'm sorry. If you have to generate aromaticity, then try thinking from one end. This nitrogen have to be neutralized first of all. So this pi bond have to be shifted to nitrogen. This carbon will develop a plus charge. So adjacent carbon must develop a negative charge. Then this carbon develops a plus charge. So this carbon must develop a negative charge. And this carbon is not making any pi bond. So the only way to develop a negative charge is to break away the hydrogen that is on this carbon like this. So if you take away the H plus, that carbon will develop a negative charge like this. Fine. Now you can go your, to your nitrogen from this side. Negative, bring a positive charge here. This pi bond, break this pi bond. Get your pi bond here. Then there will be a negative charge developed here. Then in the next resonating structure, this carbon will develop, have to develop, have to develop a plus charge. So pi bond have to shift on this nitrogen. Nitrogen will become neutral. This pi bond will break and a pi bond will be formed here. So the whole thing is going to look like this. And similarly do the same thing for the, to this ring and you will, as you can see the right hand side is already looking like the one which is there in benzidine and the left hand side will be the same if you have try abstracting hydrogen from this position. That's it. You keep few things in mind. You have to make the product finally aromatic and start from one end, reach to other end. Opposite charge have to be brought to adjacent position and accordingly you'll, you'll feel. Because if negative charge has to be brought on this carbon, the only way out is to remove of H+. plus. So that's how you yourself will understand what should happen next. So that's complete this topic of tie-azo coupling.